It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. This month's sponsor of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent, integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across almost all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on matters ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies and even individuals. Having served in over 750 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance program, visit this month's sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. Using data for continuous improvement. In a recent article in the ACFE Fraud magazine, Vince Walden posited that the black box is dead. In that, there is no single tool to use to identify high-risk transactions, customer, employees, or high-risk third parties. Yet even now, it is easier to ask big, insightful questions from your data. This is something every compliance practitioner should embrace. Walden said that companies of all sizes recognize the tremendous potential for data, but many struggle turning the data into actionable insights. Understanding data to make an imperative business decision can no longer be the responsibility of one team, one role, or one department. Organizations need to empower every data worker, regardless of technical acumen, to advance their data science and analytics skills quickly in either a code-free or code-friendly environment. It is this concept of using artificial intelligence to provide insights, which is critical for the compliance practitioner. When organizations look at transactions, it is critically important that they identify the specific triggers that are driving the risk scores and influencing the predictive models. But you need to add a level of business analysis by asking, do the technical decisions you've made match the business intention? This demonstrates the need for human intervention not only to interpret the data, but then to apply it in a meaningful manner. You can move away from a solutions approach to more of an insights approach. This concept works both in fraud detection and in compliance. Your objective to increase business transparency and improve your integrity culture is not just to provide business intelligence solutions to known historical risks, i.e. looking backward, it is also to season your program to predict future risk areas and pre- prescribe insightful and timely mitigating activities as well. This can be the case where your company is engaging in frost- fraudulent transactions around customer schemes and with an insight of attributing the corrupt sales into an adaptive learning model, which could flag the transactions for additional investigation. What about conflicts of interest in your employee base? Data mining can allow a more robust prevention by training on the company's code of conduct and how it applies throughout your organization. This approach even moves towards a prescriptive solution as it allows a company to see where certain trends might be moving and the company could enter into a low-cost yet effective intervention. The process of cleaning, parsing, and proofing data, called data munging, still takes the most time, trouble, and effort. Data scientists spend approximately 80% of their time on this largely administrative tasks rather than on more productive tasks. However, there are now tools which can more effectively and more efficiently handle such tasks. One, of course, is robotic process information. This includes data that constantly 
requesting data feeds for systems and compiling them into a single data lake, which could be used for a wide variety of compliance reviews at a later date, evaluating the quality of data, then performing updated remedial steps through statistical modeling to rapidly source any anomalies. Notifying users and an organization of source data inconsistencies and staging the data going forward. When properly seen, compliance is a business process. As such, you should keep in mind certain queries that I think are tantamount and indeed part of the continuous improvement process going forward. Some of the specific compliance inquiries you can put around this process include what are the company's compliance and ethics risks, who within the organization is responsible for managing these risks, what controls in place exist to manage these risks, are these controls working and are they effective, and finally, how do you know this or not? So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, I think to start with, there is no black box. There is no single tool yet on the market to identify high-risk transactions, high-risk customers, employees at risk, and indeed high-risk third parties. This is why the data mining of big data is so critical, because you can ask big, insightful questions from your data, and more importantly, through the use of robotic process automation, uh, AI, machine learning, and a variety of other tools that are now available on the marketplace as a way to garner insights, or as I like to call them, patterns and rake leaves from your data. So there's no black box, but there's a wide variety of tools that you can employ, of course, overseen by the human element. Number two, what is driving your risk scores in your organization? Is it the transaction? Is it the customer? Is it the employee or is it the third parties? Use of big data can help you do so. And finally, all of this emphasizes that compliance is properly seen as a business process. And if you see it as a business process, then and only then can you understand that it can be studied, measured, managed, but most importantly improved, which of course is the requirement for continuous improvement. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow where we take up another topic in continuous improvement of 31 days to a more effective compliance program. As a call to action, I would ask that you tell one of your colleagues about this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance, 31 days to a more effective compliance program, and this month's topic of continuous monitoring. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network, and this month's sponsor is Affiliated Monitors. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow for another episode in 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program.